Welcome, heroes and dastardly villains. This is the 5050 Showcase. Once again, it is episode 39. Today, we're going to be showcasing my fourth sentinel. His name is Siphon, and he is Electric Blast, Energy Aura, and Electric Mastery. His whole uh, design, his goal, his thing, his shtick, Drainage. He is going to be draining the enemies dry with all kinds of minus recovery, minus endurance, shocking and awing them to death. That is Siphon's playbook. That's the only thing he does. He's going to be getting in close, uh, melee, and taking advantage of some AoEs, uh, which you'll see from his mids build. So let's take a look at that right now so we can get to it. Here is mids. Siphon. There we go. Uh, take a look. I've got pretty much everything in Electric Blast with the exception of the Tier 1 Charged Bolts. Uh, you know, not that that's necessarily a bad power, but I don't think I need it because uh, Sentinel Blast actually has an extra single target attack in it. Unlike um, the Blaster Defender Corruptor version that has the Snipe, uh, Zap, or whatever. So you've got Charge Bolts, which I skipped. Lightning Bolt, which is common to all those different sets. So there's a single target blast. I've got Tesla Cage, which I have slotted as an attack. So that's actually two. And then the third one I have is Zapping Bolt. This is a Sentinel-specific uh, attack in the electric blast. One of the things that is different between these um, sentinel blast sets and blaster sets and such is that typically there is no, I don't think there's any snipe attacks in any of them and they will replace them with something else, usually a third you know, high damage type of um, single target blast. Uh, and they might also take out some sort of utility power. Like, I think it's, uh, you don't see Tenebra's tentacles in Dark Blast as an example. Anyway, I've got everything else. And amongst those everything else are a couple of AoEs that are going to help me do this, this drain and pain concept. We've got Ball Lightning, uh, which is a targeted AoE, which does some minus endurance. We take a look at our numbers on that you can see that your endurance is minus seven percent then i've also also have short circuit which is a pb aoe attack and the minus endurance on that is 35 so those two attacks right together are going to be minus 42 percent endurance so almost half just with those two thunderous blast is a third AoE attack that you get and that one has a massive minus 105% so that is your your ranged nuke power uh, and its recharge is at least the way I have my my character slotted it's pretty uh, pretty short it's about 40 seconds down from 90 seconds uh, so that that's you know cut in half it's pretty decent I have gone with a decent amount of minus recharge so that's how I've shaved off a lot of this uh, recharge for something like that uh, but that is a huge minus endurance it's not going to be in every mob attack just because you don't have enough uh, recharge on it but it's it's there to really take out a, a large group of hard targets so throwing those all together I mean we've got like a hundred and fifty percent endurance drain right there uh, but of course there's more to it uh, energy aura actually has a beautiful endurance draining power is actually why i took it and that is power drain down here it's your tier eight minus endurance plus endurance this power also is a pb aoe and the minus endurance on this is 66 almost 67 percent so you add up all my different sources of uh, endurance draining you got about a buck 70 there the ball lightning, like I said, was another 7177. Short circuit. Uh, I'm over 200%, like 210% endurance drain, just with those four powers. And those four are going to be used quite frequently in order just to get uh, a group of targets drained heavily. Uh, a couple of my opening attacks are going to 
you'll see when I get into the actual play testing here, the showcasing is power drain and short circuit. Those two together are 100% of a target's endurance. It's the 67 there and the 35. So I'll be swooping into melee, PVAOE, hitting these two to just drain all of every single target's endurance uh, that I'm facing. Uh, so that is the main concept as I go in and take care of that. Uh, but there is still yet even more. Uh, you know, I believe in overkill in some of my uh, builds here. So if I'm going to go and do endurance drain, I'm going to make sure I drain the endurance. I've also got lightning field which comes from Electric Mastery. So Lightning Field is another beautiful uh, endurance draining power. It is going to be draining 6%. I think that's per tick, per pulse, uh, per hit. And I don't know if there's a duration on that. I'm assuming it is a few seconds. Uh, so I'm going to go into melee and be draining 6% every whatever few seconds that that power uh, ticks against uh, enemies. So every few seconds, it's going to be draining 6%, uh, and that's just going to be a constant, you know, siphoning of power. And to kind of put the cherry on top of all that, I'm going to jump ahead and talk about my incarnates. I am going to be using preemptive, and that's my interface. So preemptive is going to, if you see me clicking it over here, it is going to take, for instance, lightning field from a minus 6% and it's going to tick it up to minus 7, but it's also going to apply a, a minus recovery uh, debuff. And that's really the secret to, if you want to be a siphon, an endurance draining sapper build, you need to have some way to uh, nuke the recovery of your targets. So you can drain them really quickly, but as soon as they get out of your, your, your range there, they're going to recover uh, and be right back to attacking. So you want to be able to slow or stop their recovery. So that is a great um, little side effect there for that particular uh, interface. Uh, I don't know if any of the other powers has minus recovery. I'm just kind of scanning around here at my other drains. I don't think they do. So that's your main way of attempting. Ah. Short Circuit also has it. Recovery is 5%. So between that and Interface, you're looking at you know 10 12% is going to be uh, slowing the recovery. Let me see it's Thunderous. Thunderous Blast also has a minus recovery. Another 5%. I will say this is one of the problems with trying to make an Endurance Draining Sapper build is it's really hard to find that minus recovery that is going to stick on a target. So even with you know this build that's designed to do just that i'm only going to be mustering about 12 percent recovery debuff let me just check something else no chain fences does not have it okay so i just wanted to one of the confirm that uh the other interesting thing that this build does besides sort of the drain is i like electric mastery because it's one of the only uh sets in let me scoot this up so you can see it's one of the only sets for sentinels that has a damage or debuffing aura that can also draw some aggro because remember i've been talking about this with my other sentinels is you have this high survivability but you typically don't have any way to hold the aggro to kind of take advantage of that so lightning field is a nice way to do that it's a you know aoe damaging power you can't it doesn't taunt per se but it is going to damage and draw aggro just by virtue of that uh so this is going to be a nice uh you know reason for taking this so if you want to get into melee you want to keep targets locked on you and attacking you something like electric mastery with lightning field is the way to go uh, then i've also got chain fences which is another aoe targeted power that does do some minus endurance so if you take a look, that's going to be minus 10%. Um, it's listing a minus 100% recovery on this, which that would be interesting. It says you can immobilize multiple foes in a chain of electricity, dealing minor damage to all foes in range, draining some endurance. It also reduces... So I don't see why it's saying there is some minus recovery in it. That part... I'm not sure if that's that's real or not. Maybe that's PvP. I don't know. 
Uh, that would be news to me. I don't think that it does do minus uh, recovery, but it does do minus endurance and it's 10%. So there's another way I can quickly trade. So even though I don't have a lot of minus recovery, I have lots of ways of uh, hitting multiple targets with endurance drain so I can keep things constantly getting drained, whether they recover or not. And then the other interesting thing that I like with Electric Mastery, it's the only um, set that I'm aware of for, for Sentinels that has a way of healing uh, allies. So rehabilitating circuit, you can use the circuit to heal the wounds of your group. Although you can be healed by this power, you need to use it against an ally for the chain to affect you. So this is similar to what you would see with Electric Affinity, the buff set. Uh, Rehabilitated Circuit can jump and heal yourself as well as others. So I have that, it's a nice kind of protective way. So Electric Mastery is, is pretty neat. You know, it gives you sort of an ability to, I guess, tank or, or be a buff, you know, type of um, Sentinel. You've got the healing chain here and you've got the lightning field aura. So those are a couple of nice uh, powers that this set brings to the table. It's probably the most unique uh, power pool, ancillary power pool for Sentinels and maybe one of the most unique in the game itself. I, I really like this option. It brings something to the Sentinels that you, you don't see anywhere else, right? You've heard me talk about this in my other videos that for the most part, the secondary sets for Sentinels are pretty, pretty lame. They are just defense or damage resistance sets. They don't do anything special, right? They're, they just keep you alive, survivability. Uh, they don't have any sort of taunting or much in the way of you know, debuffing, that kind of thing that's going to pull aggro or help your team. Uh, the exception that I had was with my Banisher Sentinel, who I just did the video the other day. Uh, he does have dark armor, and there is some nice you know control debuff in that set, but... Most of the other sets don't have anything. So being able to bring Electric Mastery and combine it with this particular build allows you to, to you know, round out your overall character here. You have, obviously, your attacking uh, blasts. You've got your survival uh, shields, defenses here. And then you've got this some control with chain fences. You've got some taunting aggroing uh, field and draining you've got the healing chain and then just the whole package is based around this idea of just draining everything dry and then just you know incinerating it i guess or just uh scorching it with your lightning powers until it's dead uh and you also get the the shocked uh side effect that comes with electric blast powers and that is shown let me scoot this back up so if you don't know anything about electrical blast uh, on the homecoming server it's been buffed so that uh, when you start to electrocute people and they get lower endurance you have a chance to do i think it's the shocked side effect or you know whatever secondary thing and so your electric blast have to sh uh, shock the target and based on its current endurance percentage you have a chance to inflict bonus damage and bonus minus recovery. So that may be where that 100% was coming in for the um, chain fences. So if I start draining things, which I'm going to do, the shock is going to get triggered a lot. That gives you a damage boost and it gives you the minus recovery on top of all that. So you can keep things drained. So this guy, he's going to get in close and start bringing the pain uh, by draining. So draining and drain and pain. That's the name of the game. All right. The only other stuff I kind of want to get into a little bit are some of the uh, uh, leadership package flight, that kind of stuff. We'll discuss this a little bit. And then, of course, take a look in more depth at the incarnates. And I'll kind of conclude with just looking at some of the slotting that I've done. Uh, so this guy is going to use hover. He's going to be swooping in, swooping out as his mobility. Uh, he's also got stealth so he can get in without being seen because remember my plan is I need to get in close Maybe hurl ball lightning as I'm swooping in because there's a delay between the cast time and when it starts to affect and damage So that's usually enough time for me to swoop in and when I swoop in what am I gonna do short circuit? 
and power trades. So by the time I get into melee and click all that stuff, they are, the enemies are going to be relatively drained completely to nothing. That's going to, of course, trigger my shocked, uh, which is going to give me a damage boost. And at that point, I can just start unloading with, you know, lightning bolt, Tesla cage, zapping bolt, uh, and then ball lightning again, short circuit again, thunderous blast if I really need to just melt an entire group. I've also taken Voltaic Sentinel. This is the one power that I, you know, don't know if I like. I don't really like it. It's just a controlless pet that follows you around and it shoots things. And uh, I think it's a toggle now, the way they have it working. Uh, you manifest this little electrical field, hovers around, enemy that passes near it, it's going to get shocked. So, uh, Sentinel is not alive and cannot be targeted, so you can't actually, you know, boost it at all. Uh, it flies and follows you, and I think it's just a toggle, right? Let's confirm that. Summon the Sentinel. I don't know, I forget. I thought it's a toggle now, but anyway. So that just randomly spits out electricity. That's the one power I'm thinking I might... I could scrap that and just go ahead and grab charge bolts. I mean, with charge bolts, I could, you know, throw four slotted lightning bolt in there, or uh, not lightning bolt, but thunder strike. Give me some more defense. Give me some more accuracy. You know, so that might be more useful than, let's say, expedient reinforcement. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So anyway, I've got that going. Uh, and then aside from that, you'll see my my. Uh, do 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 the leadership package maneuvers and tactics as well as vengeance you know vengeance it's one of those you know give or take type of powers it's if your edit your ally dies you can vengeance and boost everybody the big problem i see with that well two problems with vengeance I mean, it's a great power that has a good boost is well one it requires a dead ally right so that means somebody has to have screwed up and gotten themselves killed uh which you know doesn't happen in a lot of just basic gameplay anymore so it's not very usable just because of that uh the second problem with vengeance is that a lot of times you know you've probably experienced this if you played before is that uh the target reses or is res before you can actually get the vengeance off so you know they die you're like oh let me swoop over there and go and get vengeance because the range is not that long on it uh, and by the time you find them, get over to them, and want to click, they've already clicked Awaken, or one of your allies with a res power has gotten them up, or they have their own self-res. So a lot of times you miss it, right? Um, so anyway, that's kind of why it's sort of a bit of a waste. But I did take it mostly because of, I'm going for the luck of the gamblers here, trying to get some recharge, and that's where I was getting this 45% right here. So that's one of the ways I was getting some recharge. So, you know, it's a take it or leave it power. It really doesn't matter. All right, then the other thing to take a look at is as far as survivability, right? You're going with Energy Aura, and Energy Aura has a lot of defense uh, built in. You've got Kinetic Shield, which is defense with Smash Lethal Energy. Uh, so those are three of the most common damage types in the game. You've got Kinetic Dampening, dampening which is resistance, so damage resistance, to just about everything. Uh, the one good thing in here is you have slow resistance, so it's very hard for anything to mess with your recharge or mess with your movement speed. I like slow resistance. Power shields, your defense to those elemental damage types, fire, cold, energy, negative, that sort of thing. It does give you some defense debuff resistance. Energize is your own little self-heal, self-regeneration power, so that's nice. Uh, you have one of those. So between that and the rejuvenating, or sorry, rehabilitating circuit, you have a couple of options to to heal yourself. So you've got rehab circuit, and then you've got energize. So those two are some some healing powers that you can use on yourself, which you're gonna need because you know defense sets are not impervious. I mean, you really gotta max, you gotta cap your defense. Otherwise, you know, they're still you're still gonna get hit against plus fours as an example. Then you've got uh, your 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 toggle shield here, entropy that gives you your mez protection. Uh, so that's you know critical, right? You need that. It also boosts your recharge, which is nice. So you've got some native recharge boosting just from that power. Power armor, there is some boost to just your overall hit points and resistance, everything. Uh, repelling force is just an auto plus defense power. That's all it does. 
And then I already mentioned the power drain, the big old siphon of endurance, which you get a whole bunch of it. So this guy is going to be defense based. And if you take a look at his numbers, you can see he's got pretty good numbers. His defenses are all, you know, 30, 40, 50 percent for the most part. Positional is not the best, 20 something percent. But, you know, the, the main ones, you know, are pretty close. Smash lethal energy around 50 percent. So he's going to rely heavily upon not being hit. He does have some decent damage resistance on top of that, smash lethal energy, etc. Uh, not the greatest, right? But hopefully between the two, you've got enough survivability that you can then heal yourself with Energize or heal yourself with the Rejuvenating uh, Circuit. If you wanted to make yourself even tougher, uh, you could go into, let's say, the Fight Pool instead of, I don't know, Leadership and grab Tough and Weave to get, you know, some of the defense back that you lose from Maneuvers. And Tough would give you some more Smash Lethal Resistance, you know, bringing that up to close to 50%. Uh, so you could do that if you wanted to get more into Melee, then maybe you're taking a Havoc Punch from your a Mastery set to at least have something Melee to punch with. I'm not playing it that way, right? I'm playing more just the drain. If I could drain enemies with just a couple of hits within a couple of seconds, then even if my defenses are not foolproof, foolproof, I'm still not going to take as much damage because they just don't have the endurance to attack me. Uh, now, mobs, for the most part, don't need a ton of endurance to attack, but it can at least remove some of the speed at which they're attacking because they have to wait for their recovery to kick in. Also, it prevents them from you know, maybe using uh, their bigger attacks, which cost more endurance. Uh, you know, the NPCs, the mobs in the game, they don't have the same endurance requirements as, you know, characters do. You know, you've got stuff that costs 15 to activate for a, an NPC or, or a computer mob. It's like, you know, two. Uh, so you really need to just drain them completely if you want to, if you really want to attempt to, you know, not be attacked. But... I'm draining them enough because I'm going to be draining them completely and I have enough of the minus recovery that it's going to decrease my overall incoming damage because targets are going to be out of juice. All right, then the last thing I want to talk about then would be the incarnate stuff. So if we take a look at what I'm doing here, I already mentioned I'm taking the preemptive to get more endurance drain, more recovery. So that one's obvious. Uh, for my alpha, I want agility because that gives me end modification. So that's not only going to help my own endurance recovery, but it's going to help my endurance draining powers uh, across the board. So something like lightning field uh, with that is, you know, sitting at what, 7-7. Seven, seven. Power drain is draining 74, almost 75 percent now. Uh, you've got your ball lightning is draining you know, 10-ish, uh, what is it, Thunderous Blast, where, Thunderous Blast, Thunderous Blast is 140%, so my overall endurance drain is huge now, you know, I'm going to be just shredding endurance when I have my alpha and my interface kicking it, okay, uh, and then don't forget that Shocked is going to provide some additional minus recovery. Uh, then I went with Ion Judgment because it has a nice minus endurance, minus recovery, and chance for hold. So that's also going to help me. Uh, the minus endurance on this is 35%. The recovery is 100%. So I can hit you with that. That's another big old targeted AoE to keep your endurance down. I've got Rebirth, which is a nice heal. So I have a third way to heal myself. My allies boost my regeneration with that. And then I've got the Support Radial. Damage Accuracy Defense, which helps, of course, my overall defense numbers. When we take a look at that, you know, my defenses are now, let me activate the act. It's boosted me about 10% right across the board. It's also got the special, which should boost uh, my endurance draining as well, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't know if it's going to show up here on mids, but yeah, it doesn't look like this. I'm pretty sure special applies to stuff like endurance drains, uh, endurance recoveries. So I'm pretty sure about that one. Uh, it also just gives me an overall endurance uh, discount on top of everything else. So this guy is built to, like I said, drain the heck out of the enemies real fast and then start bringing the pain. He's got actually lots of 
AOEs and little DLT, you know, damages that are going to be clicking. I've got the Sears, I didn't even mention them. I like the Sears of this build. They fly around, can help buff and do side damage and stuff. Uh, so this overall build is really tough. He's very survivable uh, and brings another aspect to the game. He's not just going to throw out raw damage. He's going to be able to siphon uh, the endurance. Set-wise, you take a look. Thunder Strikes are cheap, but they boost some of the things I need. Defense, recovery, accuracy is great, right? And then, of course, movement speed because I am relying upon hover. So I need to be able to move around quickly. So I've got that. Uh, reactive defense is giving me just some basic resistances. I do have the steadfast unique. That's the uh, resistance global defense boost. I did six slots on my attacks with the annihilation. That gives me some of that minus resistance. So that's going to help the, uh, the increase my damage with the chance of resistance debuff. It's got max endurance. It's got uh, defense boosting, endurance discounts. So I've got that in a couple powers, Thunderous Blast and Fall Lightning. Uh, I've got a set of multi-strikes sitting here in short circuit. That is going to give me some damage resistance to multiple you know, damage types, plus some, some uh, defenses, AoE, melee, etc. Uh, you've got the Harmonized Healing and Energize. There's some more defense with the five slots that boosts some damage resistance, gives me some recovery. You see that also in Rehabilitating Circuit over here. Uh, I've got six slotted performance shifters, so chance for plus end on Lightning Field, as well as the power drains. Not only am I draining with power drain and getting back endurance, uh, same idea with Lightning Field. I also have the chance for the performance shifter to proc and give me even more endurance back. Uh, which it does pretty nicely. These also with six slots boost damp, uh, defenses, right? So that's a real, uh, nice little combination. I've got the Psy Resistance uh, unique sitting here in Power Armor with Aegis. Uh, I don't think the one from Impervium Armor is a unique, though. So this gives me some Psy Resistance, which is one of my you know areas I need. You throw in a Feebled uh, Operation on your Chain Fences. That gives you a little bit of recharge, gives you some defense with four slotting, gives you some damage resistance. So I've got a nice sort of overall hodgepodge of sets here that are boosting resistance, boosting defenses, give me a smidge of recharge here and there. And so all my totals are adding up to what you're seeing here. I've got once my uh, you know alpha and my other incarnates are clicked, you know, I'm sitting pretty solid with these defenses. 60 percent right across almost all of them my damage resistances again are not great but it's enough to kind of take the edge off some of these attacks uh my endurance recovery three two versus uh one four that's nice because as i've mentioned a few times i always shoot for at least two to one recovery to end drain if not close to three to one so i've got at least two to one two and a half to one at this point with this guy so that's a good combination Recharge is not over the top crazy, but it's it's decent. And my re, uh, endurance reduction is is you know huge, seventy five percent. So that's awesome. All right, lots of bits pieces. Of this layered defensive approach you've seen me do with many of my other builds, and the build itself was not very expensive, right? If you look at these set choices, there's not a bunch of purple sets. I don't have any of the ATOs in here. Uh, you know, I've only got a couple uniques, so it's a relatively inexpensive build. A couple hundred million, maybe, right? There's a couple of these unique ones that are a little bit pricey, like the, the Performance Shifter plus Ends, the Steadfast over here, maybe the Aegis over here. But this is a dirt cheap build, but high survivability, and it's going to do a great job. I think you'll see when I do the testing of the endurance training and being able to damage a lot of targets in a pretty wide uh, area around me. So that's his goal. That's what he's going to do. That's what I hopefully you'll get to see. And this is Siphon episode 39. I will catch you in the solo mission tests.